All right, so basically a bit of a background uh, about mechanics. There are basically three branches of mechanics. Uh, mechanics of deformable bodies, uh, theoretical mechanics, uh, which is also referred to as mechanical of non-deformable bodies or mechanics of rigid bodies and fluid mechanics. Um, basically, these other two are not covered within a uh, advanced diploma type course. Um, they're very complex type um, analysis for some of these. I did aerospace engineering at university and we had to do um, mechanics on non-deformable bodies and fluid mechanics and uh, very, very complex, lots of mathematics, high mathematics. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, don't have to worry about those. But if you continue to go through um, further education or if you already have a degree, then you'd have an appreciation of some of these. But as I said, it's just similar, but it's just more complex because the um, mechanisms are not so straight cut when they're not rigid. All right, statics, dynamics, and kinematics are what's involved in theoretical mechanics. Uh, and basically, theoretical mechanics considers uh, forces, position, speed, velocity, acceleration, friction, and inertia. And basically, um, Statics, the theory of machines and mechanisms concerned with the analysis of loads such as force, torque, and physical systems that are in static equilibrium. That, does, that the static equilibrium is not just standing still. It might be a system that is moving, but it's not accelerating or it's not decelerating. It's just at its steady. It has a constant velocity, for instance. All right, dynamics, it's the study of motion. Um, of machines and mechanisms, but it takes into account the forces that act on the mechanisms or the machines. Kinematics, it's basically just the science of motion and without regard to the forces that cause the motion. Uh, so therefore, we only consider um, uh, acceleration, uh, displacement, velocity and whatnot without considering the forces that cause them. In this particular module, we'll only be looking at the statics and dynamics aspects of things, uh, mainly the statics. Kinematics, I believe that will be um, looked at in your next module, module six. And just a bit of a more rundown of what statics entails. I won't go through it in detail. You can go through um, from the slides. And uh, kinematics, as I said, in this module, we'll look at static and dynamic issues related to robots and structures. Uh, as well as the associated energy requirements and selection of batteries for mobile robots. Uh, we'll look at energy requirements and selection of batteries in uh, the later modules, I think module two, module three and module four, particularly for the batteries. All right, so, um, robotics. Basically, robotics concerns itself. I'll just get my pen here and my markers. It just makes it easier for me to uh, sort of, so you can follow what I'm saying. So basically, it concerns itself with desire to synthesize some aspects of the human function with mechanics, sensors, actuators, and computers. Um, basically, one of the best definitions that uh, has been given for robotics is by the Robotics Associa Industries Association. And it says, it's a reprogrammable, multifunctional manipulator. Manipulator is just how you achieve a particular type of activity, you know, moving arm, moving uh, pincers, uh, you know, whatever mechanism, it's the, the, usually the linkage mechanism, uh, designed to move material, parts, tools, specialised devices through variable programmable motions for the performance of a variety of tasks. And basically, the, one, the three main aspects of, of robots is that um, they usually have some sort of mechanical arm or arms. They have sensors to respond to input. Obviously, you don't want your robot to be smacking and uh, bumping into things. So they have, do have sensors so they know where they are. They can locate themselves like we have our own sensors. And robots, which are particularly designed based on human sensors and human thinking and whatnot, um, obviously have those, um, you know, try and have artificial type sensors. And obviously, intelligence to make decisions. And here we have the various components of um, robots. Uh, basically, you need your means of programming, uh, and that's your uh, link to your controller here. So you provide the input, 
and so you have the external feedback and uh, external commands. So external commands coming in from your computer. External feedback would be, um, say, responses from your uh, mechanisms, or from the different devices, from your sensors, for instance. Uh, you have manipulators, which obviously, is, as I said, usually the linkage uh, mechanism. Um, and you have your end effectors, which usually um, is yeah, pincers or some sort of device here. It's uh, a welding uh, device, but uh, it could be another component, but it's what it's usually at the end of the manipulator. Uh, power supply, and if it's a mobile robot, it usually has some sort of battery system. If it's uh, a, a, um, a uh, system that doesn't need to be uh, mobile, as in moving around, walking about, then it could be um, hardwired uh, and um, be directly receiving power. Uh, from, say, an AC um, current. It might also be um, a battery powered, but it might need to be plugged in in order to recharge the battery and whatnot. So uh, it needs a power supply and it needs a means of programming and that's obviously a computer um, program or some other type of programming system which can be uh, placed within the robot itself. Okay, robots are classified according to uh, usually three means, the control system, the actuator drive, and the shape of the envelope. Um, control system, servo robots and non-servo robots. Actuator system, whether it's operated um, electronically, pneumatically, or hydraulically, that's how it usually moves, the actuator, what causes the actuation, the motion. Uh, shape of the work envelope, um, this is how the actual robot moves in its workspace and revolute, Cartesian, cylindrical or spherical um, type motions and we'll go through these shortly. And as I said, the four work envelopes, there are more and we'll look at these um, other uh, envelopes as I said uh, next. Uh, but basically um, uh, the type of coordinate system, the arrangement of the joints, the length of the manipulator segment all help determine the shape of the work envelope. Uh, another important thing is to identify the maximum work area. A point on the robot's wrist is used rather than the tip of the gripper or the end of the tool bit.